and welcome to uh, today's class where we are going to uh, go back to speak a bit about the hyperboloid and the aim of the class is to describe some of the so-called geodesics of the hyper in the hyperboloid model um, since we already have a, a Riemannian metric right so we are going to present uh, some of these geodesics um, defined in terms of this uh, shortest uh, length property um, right I mean as opposed to uh, uh, the curves that satisfying certain differential equation right um, okay so uh, consider uh, the um, stereographic projection but now it's it's a different stereographic projection that I think uh, we mentioned already at some point in the class um, where you know and now I'm interested in uh, in projecting uh, from the unit disk uh, to the uh, to M right to the hyperbola and um, with the idea of uh, pulling the the Riemannian metric I have for the hyperboloid to a Riemannian metric of, uh, of the unit disk for the unit disk. Um, I do that because there is, there is a computation that is more easily done for in the disk than in the hyperboloid. Right? But I'm not yet going to, uh, to study uh, the, the, the disk model in detail. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, so when we do that, we are going to project from the point um, uh, 0, 0, minus 1 mm -hmm. um, and you know I do the same I did with the with the sphere so I, I, I look at the rays or at the lines uh, passing through the point 0, 0, minus 1 uh, and then it's going to intersect uh, you know I take those lines that, that intersect the unit disk uh, and um, and then I see where they intersect uh, M. And that is the, um, I call that the stereographic projection from this point um, between the disk and M, right? Of course, of course, when I take one of those lines, first I have to, to, to argue that, that uh, if this line passes through a point in, a, in, um, in the disk, and of course, through, the, through, the, through 0, 0, minus 1, uh, then it, it intersects M in, in exactly one point, right? I have to argue that. Um, that can be easily argued, right? I mean, uh, you can uh, try to uh, um, deduce the formula for this point, for the entries of this point in terms of the entries of this point, um, and then you see that it is indeed the case, right? And you obtain explicitly um, these functions, you know, from from the disk to to M and from uh, M to the to the unit disk, uh, given by these formulas, right? So from the disk to M would be given by this, right, where I write W uh, as a complex number. Uh -huh. So it's 1 divided by 1 minus the square of the norm of uh, W, and then uh, 2 times the real part, 2 times the imaginary part, and then 1 plus the square of the norm. Mm -hmm. And conversely, from uh, M to D, then uh, uh, you pretty much divide, you know, the, 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 this, you just divide it, you rescale it with Z plus 1. Okay, um, then I, 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 leave a, I leave for you as an exercise to, to uh, you know, to deduce these formulas, uh, just, just as I did in the case of, uh, of the sphere um, and uh, C bar, right, that I, that I left you as an exercise. Uh, it's not, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's you do, you, you do the same, the same thing, right, it's the same approach works. Okay, uh, another exercise, which is, uh, uh, which is um, actually quite easy. So, so, so you see, uh, C, this rule, this rule, I mean, of course, it's given as a rule, you know, that for each complex number of norm less than one, uh, throws uh, a point in, in, uh, in R3, right? And uh, it's a point in R3 that turns out to all actually belong to M, right? But as a function from D to R3, you know, uh, compute uh, its derivative, right? And then the exercise is to show that when you compute the derivative, you obtain uh, this. Okay, so so I mean here I am already giving you the answer, right? Uh, um, but okay, I mean uh, it, it's it's kind of it's, it's, it, let's say a calc three exercise. Um, okay, 
um, this this uh, with, you see with this this one with this expression, then you can see that the derivative is always injective. Uh -huh. It's always injective from you know from the tangent plane uh, at the uh, 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 of, of to d at the given point um, to the you know to the tangent three dimensional uh, space to R three at the image of the point. Right now here since uh, since here d is actually you know an open subset of uh, of uh, of C or R two. Uh, this is somehow canonically identified with uh, R2 or with C if you want um, and this is canonically identified with R3 okay um, now the derivative is injective that's part of this exercise it's, it's not hard and the image is precisely precisely the tangent plane uh, to M at the point right so this one is this one is two dimensional its image its image is two dimensional uh, its image uh -huh, which is contained here of course is pre is the whole tangent um, the, the whole tangent plane to m mm -hmm. um okay and and for that like uh, you know you, you know you one 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 way to 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 to, to uh, do exercise uh, 38 is uh, you know to uh, to 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 use exercise 37 maybe mm -hmm. um okay and now uh Right, so this one is injective, right? Uh, and then the next exercise is, uh, you know, so that, so that you don't get uh, kind of, uh, you know, too confident that such 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 derivatives are always um, uh, injective. So give a, give an, an, an example of a bijective bije um, function, maybe an injective, let's say, of an. Um, um, uh, let me think. Uh, yeah, eh, now let's say bijective. Let's say bijective uh -huh. uh, of class C infinity. Uh -huh, so with uh, infinity differentiable, um, but with the property that the derivative is not always injective. Uh -huh, so that at least at some point it is not injective. Okay, uh, which means you see this one being by being bijective of class C infinity uh, doesn't imply that the derivative is injective everywhere. Right? Um, uh, if you remember, something similar happened in the case. I mean, not something similar, but I had to, to do a, a similar consideration uh, in the case of uh, Mobius transformations, right? I knew that they were bijective, but still, uh, still, I I, uh, I stopped and checked that their derivative was always uh, uh, injective, right? Um, anyway, uh, that it was never zero, but and, and since uh, it's a holomorphic map, you know, then then it's injective. Okay. Um, Right now, uh, and now finally, uh, what I want you to do is to show that phi and psi uh -huh, are actually uh, mutually inverse diffeomorphisms uh -huh, between D and M. Uh -huh. And and you see this exercise, like uh, um, let's say, if you solve this exercise, then I think uh, exercise exercise thirty eight also follows. In other words, I think. Uh, Exercise thirty-eight can can be seen to be a consequence of either exercise thirty-seven or of exercise forty. Okay. Anyway, so so my point is that uh, with this stereographic projection between uh, the unit disk, the open unit disk, and uh, the hyperboloid, uh -huh, I obtain uh, that those those stereographic projections are uh, mutually inverse um, diffeomorphisms. Of class C infinity, right? Uh, with all always with bijective uh, and, and, um, uh, derivatives. I mean, yeah, uh, that the derivative is always a bijection between the tangent uh, planes at any point, of corresponding points. So uh, that means that uh, that now since here at any tangent plane. Uh, you know, I have a, an inner product or interior product. Um, I can pull that in, that inner product to the to the corresponding tangent plane of the of the point that corresponds to this one, right? Why? Because um, because the diffeomorphism induces, as I said, a, a linear an R linear 
an R linear bijection between these two. Um, so I can pull and then, and then uh, uh, obtain a Riemannian metric for D. Right? So uh, that's what I do. Uh -huh. So that, that, that's what I had in mind when I started thinking uh, about these stereographic projections. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I call the, 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 the resulting Riemann, uh, Riemannian manifold, I call it the Poincaré disk. Okay, so the Poincaré disk is uh, the open unit disk, it's D, it's D, uh, with the Riemannian metric obtained by pulling the Riemannian metric I have for the, for the um, hyperboloid through the derivative, right? So, so given, given a point in D, given two tangent vectors, I want to define the inner product between them, or, the, or a dot product between them, or interior product between them. Uh -huh. So what can I do? I can go with the derivative, take inner product in the hyperboloid or in the tangent plane of, of the hyperboloid. Right, of course, at the point uh, in that case would be in the tangent plane at, at, a, at a C of W. Right? But of course, of course, I take, I, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, that interior product is just the, the, the Minkowski product of these vectors, right? And, um, okay. Uh, that's that's what I do, mm -hmm. and because because these are diffeomorphisms, uh, and because these already defined a, um, a an interior product, uh, sorry, a Riemannian metric for uh, M. That is since um, uh, since the you know the, since uh, the, the the matrix of this interior product varied uh, uh, um, differentiably. Uh, when moving the base point on, on M, uh, this one is uh, is in, indeed varies also differentiably when I, when uh, when I vary the point W in D. Okay, uh, okay. So this is this is a, a definition, right? And of course, one of the first things we one of the first things one uh, tries to do is uh, to have an explicit formula, right? Uh, so here it's the here is the explicit formula. Uh -huh. So for any point in the Poincaré disk and any two tangent vectors at the disk of uh, tangent vectors, uh, you know, of, to the disk at uh, at the given point. Mm -hmm. So so something like, you know the picture is something like this. Um, the formula is given. This the explicit formula. Uh -huh. For for uh, for this uh, inner product in terms of these vectors and the point is this one. Okay, so there are there are a few things to note in this formula. One is that uh, that somehow the formula can somehow be separated into in two parts. One is this part that involves only the entries of u and v. Right. Of course, here I'm writing u as the as the vector in R two. Uh, with entries u, u1 and u2 using this canonical isomorphism uh, uh, given by the fact that D is already an open set in R2. Um, and this one is the usual, you see, you see it's the usual uh, uh, dot product we are used to. So it's not so bad. So, 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 so okay, so, so it's, it's, not, it's not completely strange, right? So this, this is not completely like a strange. Okay, so it's this one, but rescaled uh, using a number that, of course, depends on W, mm -hmm. and depends on W in a way you know that that uh, uh, when uh, you see when uh, when W is close to the boundary of the disk, so close to the to the circle, uh, this number becomes very small. So this one becomes very big, actually tends to infinity, mm -hmm. which means that somehow, somehow, um, you see, you take a, a, you, you take a, the tangent uh, plane at W, but already thought of as R2, mm -hmm. and, and, and if W is close to the, to, to the boundary, to the border, if you will, um, these vectors, which kind of are vectors in R2, uh, they, 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 you assign a very long length to them, the, the closer and closer you move W to the border, right? So somehow, given, see, we are identifying with R2 
we are identifying the tangent plane with R2 for every W, right? So somehow one can think, okay, I have some sort of R2 that I can move around and kind of, I can, um, you know, uh, uh, stick to, to points, like I can move it around. And so if, if that R2, I, I, I move it close to the boundary, the, the, uh, any given vector, any given vector becomes longer and longer and longer and longer. Okay, which means somehow that that uh, that for instance, if you take a, 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 a like a, a little curve here uh, and take a point where where you where you take take the derivative of the curve, if 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 this picture, if that if that that is drawn here, you start moving it or moving it towards the border, uh, the curve somehow has to start becoming longer and longer, even though the picture itself is kind of not changing, right? You are you are only performing. Um, uh, Euclidean translations, right, to move it around. Okay, and of course, when when W moves, you know, when it when it, when when do vectors become smaller? Then, uh, well, when uh, when um, you see when when uh, when this one becomes uh, as big as possible. So when this one becomes closer to one as possible. So when W approaches the center of uh, of the Poincaré disk. Right. Um, so, for instance, take uh, I don't know. Let's say, let's say that this is the origin, and take just uh, you know just just this this uh, this uh, segment of straight line, parameterized like uh, you know parameterized I don't know. Let's say linearly in this direction. Mm -hmm. um, so, if that if that if this same picture you start moving it uh, you know moving it in kind of uh, this way, uh -huh. uh, at least you know kind of the the, um, the intuition then. Is that is that uh, this for this picture you you obtain something which has to be like a lot longer than this one somehow because it, it, because the, the 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 derivatives which kind of uh, are, are somehow the, the, the same vectors uh, now become longer because because of this factor right okay so 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 you see the, this this uh, this interior product or inner product um, is is uh, you know at any given w is uh, can be obtained by rescaling the usual dot product by a scalar that depends on w. Uh -huh. um, okay. Uh, okay. So so you see in particular in particular uh, when when if we have to define the angle between uh, two vectors, the angle between them uh, for my new with respect to my new uh, inner product um, is is equal to the to the angle. To the old angle, to the to the Euclidean angle. So when whenever I take uh, two curves and I want to say what's the angle between them, uh, I can just take the, the usual angle, right? So so this so it's kind of it's kind it's kind of it's nice that the, that 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 the formula doesn't turn out to be too strange, right? Because then because one of the things it's telling us is you can measure angles the same way you already did before. Um, okay, now now uh, I leave the proof as an exercise. Um, it's a it's not a hard exercise, um, but it's it's a it's a bit lengthy. Uh, it's a bit lengthy if uh, you know if you take any two vectors and then you you know you you multiply the vectors with the matrix that that uh, I asked you to to compute in uh, in, in exercise uh, thirty seven, uh, and then uh, and then you and then use the the, the 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 explicit Minkowski you know form, um, right, and then simplify, right. So it's it's a bit lengthy, um, but I think I think it's a very good exercise. Uh, so I really encourage you to to do it. Okay, uh, now we actually kind of already already uh, mentioned the lengths of curves, right? When one has Interior products like we did it, for instance, for the hyperbola, right? The last class that um, that uh, uh, we uh, defined the uh, hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine. Uh, we did it, you know, in term, uh, we we uh, we defined the length of a of a segment of the hyperbola right, with respect to Minkowski's form. Okay, so of course we can uh, uh, do that for uh, in, in any Riemannian in, in any Riemannian manifold, right? Because uh, the basic idea that uh, that to measure the length of a curve that to measure the length of a curve 
um, you, you know, the length of a curve as a function from some interval to your to Riemannian manifold m. Uh, that you the idea that that you can you know take a partition, um, and then take the derivative at the points of the partition. Uh, and then, and then, uh, um, and of course, maybe here as well. In the, let's say this, and then uh, thinking that that uh, you are approximating the length of each of these segments um, by uh, uh, the you know by the length of the the length of of, of those vectors. The, you know, the, the, let's say the the length of this vector uh, times. The, the you know times the the the, the amount of time uh, that it takes you to to traverse this uh, uh, segment according to the parametrization um, and then and then adding those approximations right and then seeing that 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 approach is an integral to do that you all you need all you need is to be able to uh, to well first to take the derivative but we are in a manifold right. Um, and in, in we're in a in a in a in a C in a manifold of class C infinity, right? So, so indeed we can take uh, derivatives. I mean the tangent vectors at curves, and um, uh, you need uh, to measure the, the 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 length of those vectors, right? But that's precisely what one of the things you can do in a Riemannian manifold, right? And then you assign the norm, right? Um, and and then and then well. Take this integral, right? And then I I, I, I take let's say a, a curve of class C infinity. I mean I, I define that length for a curve of class C one. I'm sorry, of class C one, to make sure that uh, that the, the 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 derivative is continuous, right? Uh, and then so that this integral indeed exists, right? And of course I can weaken this condition of being class C infinity to being um, piecewise of class not C infinity. I'm sorry. C1 of class C1 to being piecewise of class C1, right? So that uh, so that uh, it's it's of class C1 in the you know that the the, the interval of definition uh, the inter this interval can be split into finitely many sub intervals on 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 each of which it's of class C1, right? So if you want, I can I can I can just add of, of piecewise of class of class C1, right? So okay. Um, Right, and then and then here, as I as I just said, uh, this what is here, I somehow call it the norm, the norm of the of the tangent vector, right, at the given point, right. So I'm going to be denoting this, the norm, uh, of that tangent vector. At the point, which point? Well, I mean, where am I taking the tangent vector? Uh, well, at this point, right. So that that's that's going to be uh, the notation that uh, we're going to find uh, later on in the class. Um, okay, so in a Riemannian manifold, I have the notion of uh, of length of a curve of class C one or a curve of uh, piecewise of class C one. Um, okay, and if I can do that, uh, then there is the notion of uh, what a shortest curve between two points is, right? So if I have if I have two points, uh, a shortest curve between the points is any curve, a parametrized curve. Uh, whose length is less or equal than the length of any curve connecting the points. Right? Now, a priori, that curve we don't know. You know, uh, for uh, for arbitrary Riemannian manifolds, uh, we don't know whether such curves exist. Right. So the notion the, the notion now is uh, makes sense. Um, but for instance, for the uh, for the hyperboloid, we don't yet know whether for any two points there is a, a shortest curve uh, connecting them. Right. So, so uh, for the moment, I'm going to be calling so, so those, those curves shortest curves um, rather than geodesics um, to take the freedom to maybe later in the course uh, see what the relation is between 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 kind of geodesics defined as shortest curves and uh, geodesics defined as uh, you know as self parallel curves, which means that uh, uh, they satisfy certain differential equation. Um, for some for some uh, connection that uh, that uh, uh, induced by uh, by the Riemannian metric, right? Um, 
So in order kind of to, to, to leave freedom to maybe later um, speak about, you know, the, the, this, the relation between these two a priori different notions of uh, what a geodesic is, for the moment, I'm going to call them uh, shortest curves, mm -hmm. the ones that uh, minimize the length uh, with, res uh, for, with respect to all curves that are connected to given points. Um, okay, so here maybe let, let me say the length is in green. And here, shortest curve also in green. Okay, um, now finally, uh, the distance between two points in a Riemannian manifold, um, I define it to be the infimum of all the lengths of all possible curves that connect them. Right? And here, here maybe I should add piecewise of class C1. Okay, um, so notice, I mean, for this, of course, I need M to be a path, a path connected, right? And like, let's say C1 path connected. Or, um, or piece, or you know that for any two points there's at least one um, uh, one curve that is piecewise of continuous curve piecewise of class C one, right? So that this number uh, indeed exists, um, right? And then of course, of course, it, it, if 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 I if between two points I have a shortest curve, then of course uh, the distance has to be the length of that shortest curve. So okay, so that that's obvious. But here I'm not assuming that those curve, those shortest curves, always exist. So that's that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as I said, the objective of uh, today's class is to uh, try and and uh, find some um, geodesics in the hyperboloid, okay? and, uh, and somehow introducing uh, the Poincaré disk for the moment is just a, a, like a, a tool. To, uh, to perform some computations that are easier to perform in the disk than in the hyperboloid. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, my focus is still the hyperboloid. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so of course, uh, uh, like, one, like one of the things we would like is, for instance, that uh, let's say take the hyperboloid and then cut it with, um, uh, let's say, with the, with the XZ plane. Right, so that the cross that cross section is a hyperbola, uh, and of course we would like those hyperbolas. I mean, we would expect those hyperbolas to be shortest curves between any of of, of you know. It's a, a, the hyperbola is infinite, so pick any two points, and then the, and then the segment of that hyperbola that joins those two points between those two points, uh, we would expect it to be a, a shortest curve between the two points, right? I mean, uh, what else makes sense? Right? Uh, so I'm going to do something. Something uh, I'm going to do that in particular today, uh, but I'm going to do something slightly more general. Mm -hmm. So, given a point in M and a tangent vector uh, at that point, mm -hmm, uh, let's define a curve. Uh, it's infinite curve mm -hmm, uh, by this by this um, well the, the curve defined in the whole R by this formula. Right. So if 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 V is not the zero vector, so in most cases. In most cases, um, uh, it's going to be given by this formula, right? So, so, so you see somehow, somehow it's kind of it passes through p because at t equals zero, uh, uh, this gives me the cosine, uh, cosine hyperbolic cosine of zero is one, right? Because it's e to the zero plus e to the minus zero divided by two, uh -huh. so passes through p. And then this is somehow the you, you see the direction. So it's this kind of this is kind of kind of reminiscent of what of when when one um, parameterizes a straight line in R three, let's say. So this is sort of reminiscent um, of that. Um, okay, and if it, if it's the zero vector, of course I want to to I would like to stay in P right, forever. Um, Right, of course, one of the things one would have, one would have to check is that the image is indeed in M, right? So uh, this I leave as an as an exercise. Um, it's not hard, uh -huh. uh, right? Because because this curve, so I mean, I, I said the basic idea, but how, how do I know that this indeed always lies on uh, on, on M, right? So on, always falls in M, inside M. So okay, so that's an exercise. Mm -hmm. um, 
okay? So since the variable is t here, this one is of course of class actually c infinity. Um, and another, another uh, exercise is to prove uh, that uh, at zero passes through p, this I already argued why, because this this is one and this is and this is in and sine of hyperbolic sine of zero is zero, right? Um, uh, and actually, when you take uh, the norm uh, of of the of the tangent vector at any given point, mm -hmm. um, uh, ah, sorry, here it, sh it shouldn't be here. This should be uh, gamma uh, gamma p v of uh, t. Right, because that's the point that this is the point at which I take the tangent uh, vector okay so that this norm is always the norm of my uh, of my vector mm -hmm. so which means that that uh, that my curve that this curve actually has constant rapidity um, okay so at the moment I don't say constant constant speed well I mean uh, um, I mean, only constant rapidity, right? The, the length of the, of the, of the, of the speed. Um, um, yeah, I mean, because because so far I don't have a, a, a canonical way of comparing two tangent places of m, right, at different points. So I don't I don't quite know what it means to have a constant velocity, right, at the constant tangent vector, because I, I mean, uh, strictly speaking, they are not even the same space, right? So so so. Anyway. Uh, so at constant rapidity. Uh, this is all. This is also quite easy. This is very very easy. I mean, you have to to pair this uh, vector with itself, uh, with according to the Minkowski's form. Mm -hmm. So okay. Now, uh, right. Um, since you see now, since this uh, norm, since since the, since, the, since the tangent vector has constant rapidity equal to this number. Um, when we when we uh, when we when we take the, the the part of this curve that goes from p so from from t equals zero uh, to any given value of t so to, to t naught let's say uh, uh, that is in the, on the curve you, you you go from p to this one um, the length well the length is, is is you see where is the integral um, yeah so the length is so here is the integral. Uh -huh. And then this 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 one is a con the con this constant the constant number right this constant this constant number, so uh, so the length is of course this right so it's t naught times um, times the the um, times times the, this constant. Right? So for instance, in particular, if uh, if this v you took it to be uh, uh, to have uh, norm one here. Uh, in other words, if you took it, if you took this this vector on the unit circle of uh, this tangent uh, plane, then uh, then the length is actually uh, just t naught. Mm -hmm. So from zero, so 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 you see from from the part of, of r that goes from zero to t naught, the length of the curve is t naught. So so in that case, it, uh, this mean, this means that in that case, if if, if v has a norm one, uh, this this one is parameterized by arc length. That's that's what it means. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, 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 the purpose of this class is uh, to show that that every segment of, of the curve uh -huh, is a shortest curve. Right. So you have an infinite curve, right? And then um, we want well that that for any of its points, it, uh, the, that segment uh, is actually um, the um, the shortest curve. Between these two points uh, on M. Okay. Um, okay, so what we are going to do, I mean, we're going to take advantage of the fact that we already know that uh, um, that the restricted Lorentz group, which I called SO21M of R, uh, acts transitively on M. Right? Uh, because, that, because then what we're going to do is we're going to look at a certain curve. That uh, starts at n at the at the point zero zero one, uh, and then and then and then you know prove what we want for that, and then uh, and then uh, and then send it with some, with elements of a right like take that curve and and move it around 
using elements of, uh, of the restricted Lorentz group. Um, okay, so that, that's somehow the, the, the idea of, of what I want to do. Uh -huh. Now, uh, the lemma, the lemma is that you see when, when you take your point, you know, your initial point P, you take it to be this N, this North Pole um, of M, thinking that the South Pole is 0, 0, minus 1. Uh, that this curve, you see that, 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 that for the segment going from 0 to T0, uh, uh, it's, a, it's the shortest curve, it's a shortest curve connecting N to, uh, to, uh, to, to this point, which would be with this vector, would just, you know, would be the point uh, co uh, hyperbolic cosine of T0, uh, comma 0, sorry, sorry, it would be, sorry, it's here, it's here, uh, it's here, right? So it connects N, it starts in N and finishes in, um, in, in, in a hyperbolic sine of T0, zero hyperbolic cosine of t naught right and that this because it is p that p here it's zero zero one and v is one zero zero right and uh, the norm of the of of, of this vector this, this norm is one um okay uh, so you see so you see kind of here you can already see since uh, since this square minus this square is minus one Actually, I'm already taking, uh, you know, the, the hyperbola, the hyperbola that, uh, that the, the hyperbola obtained by taking the cross section uh, of the hyperboloid given by just cutting with the x, x z plane, uh, already parameterized by arc length. That hyperbola parameterized by arc length. Right? Now, don't get don't get confused. Uh, the fact that something is parameterized by arc length doesn't doesn't mean that it's a shortest curve. Right? I mean, um, you know, just think about uh, you know in the Euclidean plane, take any take any curve, and then with some tricks, many times one can just find a parameterization of that curve with arc length. Um, but that doesn't mean that the given curve was was a, was a straight line. Right? Um, so same thing. So so same thing here. The fact that we already achieved. Um, Parametrization by arc length doesn't mean it's a shortest curve, so we, we have to do something. Uh -huh. Now the first thing is uh, because of 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 of, uh, of of what I said here, right? Uh, the length of, of the curve of the length of this curve is actually t naught. Okay, uh, so I so at least I can at least I can at least uh, measure easily the length of this curve. Okay, now. I want to show that it's a shortest curve between uh, uh, between n and uh, and sin, uh, hyperbolic sine of t naught zero hyperbolic cosine of t naught. Uh, so let's take uh, let's take any curve uh, joining them. Right? Let's take any curve and let's say uh, we we parameter that is parameterized with the with the uh, unit interval. Why not? I mean, the fact that the fact that that this curve is parameterized with the interval zero t naught doesn't prevent me from taking other curves that connect the points and are parameterized by other intervals, right? Okay, and then of course that I can write it as as the you know in terms of coordinates where each of these is a function uh, from zero one to r, right? Uh, they kind of combined it together. Actually, they land in in m. Um, okay. So here is where uh, the disk enters, the Poincaré disk enters the, the game, um, because since I have this uh, Riemannian isometry, um, the length of my eta uh, is the same, you know, is the same in the hyperboloid or in the disk, right? But of course, in the disk, I really have to, to uh, you know, to, to follow it with the inverse, right? Which then, which would be the phi, would be the phi, the phi here. Um, okay, so I do that, but but so you see, since since uh, this psi was a Riemannian iso isometry, this le that length doesn't change, and it's going to be easy to compute, easier to compute in uh, in the disk. I mean, not not easy, but maybe less hard. Uh, okay, and now now you see here I have the formula for 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 phi, 
which means that the formula for this curve in the disk has to be this one, right? thinking of, of this one as a function of t, and this one as a function of t. Right? Um, OK. Um, OK, so let's, let's start uh, with some considerations. Uh -huh. uh, the first thing I want to do is, is you see, to see that, that, uh, that this length is greater or equal to the same thing where I here I erase this part uh, so that I remain only with this. That's the first thing I want to, 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 to do. Um, now, uh, this, is, this is a bit delicate because, because uh, to compute this length, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's the integral is the integral of uh, of the square root of something that you know it's it's the norm it's the norm like here it's the norm and then you know you see it's kind of the the, the, the base point of course changes throughout you know throughout the interval um, so one one really has to be uh, careful so but okay but but uh, but but careful but but um, but we are kind of lucky because of, okay of course we have this. Right? And by this, what I mean is that for every t, this square plus this square is greater or equal than eta of, eta one of t square. That's what I mean. So that this this is kind of a, a, a point wise inequality. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and 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 hence hence like of course of course when uh, you see forget about this. Let, let's let's think only of of, uh, of this. I can divide by by any positive number, so I can divide by eta one plus eta three uh, uh, square on both sides without altering uh, the, um, the 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 direction of the inequality, right? uh, and then I can I can uh, then uh, negate what I what I gloat, and in that case it does change. Mm -hmm. um, then 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 it does change, uh -huh. so. So after negation, mm -hmm, I have it this way, okay, and then I, I can add a one, all right, um, okay. So I have this, all right. Um, so when I when I divide four by this, then then it gets reversed, right? and I obtained I obtained this. Right? Ah, okay, sorry. Here the square, right? So before dividing, uh, this is uh, you. You see, both of these numbers are positive because uh, because this lands. You see, this lands in 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 the unit disk, in the open unit disk. So so both of these are positive numbers. So uh, since one has this, then their squares also satisfy that. Mm -hmm. And then you divide four by them, and then it reverses, right? So you obtain this. Okay. All right, and then and then uh, when you take the dot product, you know the dot product. Um, um, so you see, I mean, notice this this four and this square. Uh, what what is what what are what is the role they are supposed to? This is supposed to be playing. Um, so here, in in the formula for the um, for the dot product for the inner product. Uh, at this point of the disk, it is this, right? So this, this, this play, they play this role. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, now, uh, uh, also, you see, when when you take when you take uh, the the derivatives of this, uh -huh, and then because the derivatives of that, you see, I mean, the derivative of this uh, in, um, evaluated in t plus i times the derivative of this evaluated at t. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, though this, 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 those, those derivatives. So this one prime, and this one prime are the entries that one where one takes the usual dot product, right? Um, and then since it's a norm, it's dot product with itself, right? So, so it's it's uh, so for for this norm, you see, at this point, at this point, uh -huh, for that for for uh, for that one, uh, you have to take uh, this square. Plus this square multiplied by this. Right? Okay, so that of course is greater or equal than. Well, on the one hand, this is greater or equal than this, where eta two doesn't appear. And on the other hand, when you take this, when you only take uh, this one square, 
that is of course less or equal than this one square plus this one square right so when so you, you have two inequalities and then and then uh, in the same sense and then you multiply right they are positive numbers so uh, so you what you obtain is indeed what I, what I said I wanted uh, that the, the that this norm is equal is greater or equal than this norm where eta 2 doesn't appear at all right not here and not in the in the you know the point where we are mm -hmm, uh, taking so so somehow yeah so I, I kind of I'm kind of chopping the the imaginary part uh -huh, and uh, and I'm verifying that that when I chop um, uh, the, I obtain a, a curve that is not longer than my original one right um, okay and th that's going to play a role later on uh -huh. now. Uh, let's try to to compute this number. Mm -hmm. uh, so write write nu for the function appearing inside. Mm -hmm. uh, it right okay. So it's still it's still a function. You see, it's still a curve on the disk, right? Um, okay. Now, uh, so this one is by uh, this length is by definition the integral. Well, remember that that my uh, um, my interval was uh, zero one, right? The, because it's the interval for eta. Right, and then it was followed by uh, by c inverse. So okay, so zero one, and then uh, square root, you know, square root uh, of uh, of something that looks like uh, here. Right, square root here. So this four becomes two, and this square dies. Uh -huh. um, okay, uh, so it's two, uh -huh. and then you see one minus the norm square. Uh, right, but but you see nu uh, nu uh, you know nu is the real part of this. So 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 uh, nu square is already the norm square, right? Okay, right, and then times uh, times then the square root of this part. But the square root of that part is is just the usual um, uh, absolute value, right? Um, Okay, so so this so so this integral is the length kind of just by definition, by definition of the length. Uh -huh. This is greater or equal than uh, well, if I if I erase the the absolute value signs, mm -hmm, of course, uh, right? And then and this integral, this integral is well, the two can can be pulled out, and then I can perform a change of variable here, right? Um, okay, so I do it. Uh -huh. And then, um, well, here, if you will, this is kind of a, a calc two exercise, right? To compute this integral. Uh, okay, so uh, I won't compute it explicitly. I mean, I'm being kind of already like explicit enough, I think. Okay, uh, so if you will, this is an, a moral exercise, if you want. Uh -huh. and then another exercise is that uh, when you take when you take the hyperbolic cosine of this, mm -hmm. so. Instead of this, we write R. Mm -hmm. um, this actually gives me this this quotient, this algebraic quotient. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so hyperbolic cosine of this thing is well, I, I substitute according to the to this exercise, mm -hmm. and then uh, new new. I remember what new is. So new is eta one divided by one plus eta three. Mm -hmm. So I substitute. Uh -huh. I substitute here and here. Right, so I, I obtain a big quotient, this divided by this. Uh -huh. And then, uh, well, fortunately here it's the same denominator, so that 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 I can I can uh, just forget. Um, but of course I can pull the, I have to pull this here as a square right, because there's a square here. Okay, so I do that. Mm -hmm. I do that, and then I remember I remember that uh, eta three minus sorry eta three square minus eta one square is one. Right. Uh, and I apply it when I develop when when I expand this uh, square. Mm -hmm. So so the part that involves uh, eta three of one square minus eta one of one square uh, becomes one, and then that's why here I have a two, mm -hmm. and then this two eta eta three of one is this time this times this, right? Okay, and then on top I just develop the the square. Okay, uh, but then and then I remember who, who were. Uh, eta one and eta three. Eta one and eta three. Here, here they are. Um, they, they are. Uh, uh, 
sorry, eta one and eta three of one, right? Of one, of one. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know how how eta is parameterized, but I know its final point. Its final po final point, final point is this uh, si hyperbolic sine of t naught zero, hyperbolic cosine of t naught. Okay, so I substitute, right? I substitute, and then again I realize that one is equal to uh, cosine uh, hyperbolic cosine square um, um, a minus hyperbolic sine square and here here I should write t naught uh -huh. okay I do that because so I rewrite one right because then I can get rid of this sine square I can get these two together uh -huh. so I obtain this on top um, and then cosine is a common factor right and the other factor is precisely this so i obtain cosine of t naught hyper uh, sorry hyperbolic cosine uh, here it should be hyperbolic both on top and it's hyperbolic and also here yeah sorry about that uh okay so why did i do that well it, you see uh, i computed this this length which is sorry not this length I, this is greater or equal than this uh, and then this one I know that it's hyperbolic cosine is um, is this one okay? but the hyperbolic cosine is injective on the on the non-negative real numbers right? because I mean it's it's e to the t well I mean e to the r plus e to the minus r divided by two I mean that, that that's obviously increasing right um, okay so it's injective on this one increasing on the positive real ones right I mean it's of course it's symmetric with respect to uh, to the um, to the, uh, the vertical axis right but okay but on the non-negative it's it's positive so we conclude that uh, that this that this one is T naught right because it's hyperbolic cosine is equal to T naught Okay, so this one is equal to T naught, right? But T naught was the length. This, this, is, this was the, the easy computation at the beginning. Right? Okay, and so this means that the, the, the length I wanted to, to compute is greater or equal than this, the result of chopping the imaginary part, which is greater or equal than this number, uh, which is the hyperbolic length of, um, uh, of my curve. Right, of my of uh, the curve I was interested in, um, this curve, right, this curve. Okay, so this means that uh, uh, that this curve um, gamma of n one zero zero uh, is indeed a, a shortest curve between any of its points. Between you know between whenever you give you take two points on that curve. Uh, the segment of gamma joining them is a shortest curve. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, I correct. Uh, it's a shortest curve between between n and the point and this point. Sorry, not a, about or not from uh, not any of of any pair of its points. No, that not yet. Uh, that's what I'm what I'm about to prove now. So uh, now the the theorem is that uh, every segment of any of the curves gamma that we introduced today uh, is a shortest curve between uh, between um, between the endpoints of the segment. Okay. So so um, as I said, kind of the the, the idea is uh, to move what I know. You know that 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 uh, that. That the curve I defined that connects uh, n with the uh, hyperbolic sine of t naught and cosine of t naught, uh, knowing that that one that that curve is a shortest curve between those points, uh, kind of apply a to that curve to that segment, and and see and you know and, and then play around. Right? So take any element in the in the in the restricted Lorentz group. Uh, we we saw last um, we saw we saw uh, uh, previously that uh, uh, 
that this that that uh, a is a Riemannian isometry of m, right? So in particular, it uh, preserves lengths of uh, curves. Uh, I would say that's obvious because of the definition of what the length, right? because in the end, in the end, you know, one has to take the the kind of the dot product with it with itself. But if a, a preserves the dot product, you are done. Right? That also means that uh, it pre if if a curve, if you know that already a, a segment is a shortest curve between two points, when you apply a, the, the you know the, the the resulting curve is uh, is also a shortest curve. Um, okay. Uh, you also know, by the way, uh, that it, it preserves. Uh, the, the distance that we defined as the infimum, right? Uh, where is it? Um, here, right? Distance between two, two, two points, um, which maybe let me write it in green. Okay, um, right, and then an exercise is that actually when you take uh, the um, the you know the curve this curve look notice this this curve i can be defined for any t naught right i mean can be defined as you know what i considered before uh was segment of something that is um defined on the whole real line okay so so when you follow it with a which means that as a as vector in r3 you just multiply with the matrix a um actually you obtain this curve uh, you know for where now you write a and a, a, a p is a n and a v is a of one zero zero. Okay, uh, and now 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 the, the the one would conclude you know if one if one knows that uh, that uh, for every point in uh, in M and any any tangent vector somehow you can go back to to, to the tangent plane plane in M. Uh, then you would be done, right? Because then you you know that this one is shortest, so this one is shortest, so this one is shortest between this and the, and the kind of its final point. Um, or if you want a of a a of a dot uh, sine of t naught zero cosine of t naught the hyperbolic sine and cosine. Okay, so the, this this can be achieved in two steps. First. Is that uh, the stabilizer, uh, the stabilizer of n in the, with respect to the action of the, of the um, restricted Lorentz group, uh, that stabilizer acts transitively on the unit circle of the tangent plane of n. Right? In the tangent plane of n, I have uh, the unit circle, right? Because I have, the, I have the Minkowski's uh, uh, dot product. I mean Minkowski's inner product on that tangent plane. So, so I have the unit circle. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, the elements the elements of this one being Riemannian isometries, it means that that uh, if something is in the in a unit circle, the image is also in a unit circle, right? And it's the image the image uh, by multiplying by a, which is the derivative of a itself. Um, okay, uh, and actually, somehow you see it's not only that uh, that this action is transitive, that that this one acts transitively. On the unit circle, it's not only that, right? It's that it's that um, uh, the elements of this stabilizer are uh, are self diffeomorphisms of M that are also Riemannian isometries, uh -huh. and that uh, as such uh, induce an action, induce a, a, you know a, a map of the, the, as a derivative, right? So. So what I mean, so what I want to say is that uh, it's just not like a, an action that you can just define directly, you know, like multiply by a. Is that the action is by derivatives of Riemannian isometries of M that fix N, right? So that's that's kind of the the the, 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 the power, right? The, like the, the, what what one really has to say. Uh, okay, actually, 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 um, this one is homeomorphic to the unit circle, diffeomorphic to the unit circle. Um, because we already saw that this one is SO is the the, the, the special orthogonal group SO two. We already saw it. 
and it's quite easy to, 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 to prove. Um, okay, uh, once you know that, um, since we already know that the action of, uh, of the restricted Lorentz group on M is transitive, then that we know, because of that, then we know uh, this, this exercise 47, which means you can take not only any vector, sorry, not only any point in M to any point in M. Actually, if you choose a tangent vector and a tangent vector in the, in the corresponding unit circles, so maybe here, um, ah, yeah, so, so here they don't have to be unit, but you can add it if you will. It's kind of, it's equivalent. It doesn't matter. Um, then, uh, then you can also do that, right? I mean, you can send not only this to this, but actually you have the freedom of sending any any unit vector here to any unit vector here. Mm -hmm. And actually, one one can here say that there exists a unique one. But any case, in any way, then for the moment that that I don't care, um, right? So so that P two is uh, is a of sorry, it here should be. Uh, and V2 is A of V1, where really here A is actually the derivative of multiplying by A from the tangent plane to the tangent plane. That is really the derivative. So A is, so a is its own derivative everywhere. Um, so because of that, we are done. Every segment is the shortest curve. Um, and actually, yeah, so let me erase this. Right, because uh, what do I do? Well, uh, take take any p and any v as uh, as we did before. I mean, as we did at the beginning, uh -huh. and uh, well, now take then take uh, take uh, so that those are my like my p two and my uh, and my v two are my original ones, and then uh, and then uh, um, take uh, take the vector take n as p one and take v one to be the vector one zero zero. Uh, or you know rescale one zero zero if your if your vector according to the norm of the vector, uh -huh. and then there is going to exist this a, right? And when you when when you uh, apply that a, uh, you obtain the curve you wanted, which then it would be like p v, right? Um, okay, and that curve is a of something that you know you, you know already is a shortest curve between between n and its endpoint, uh, which is a Hyperbolic sine of t naught zero hyperbolic cosine of t naught, so it's it's a shortest curve, right? So we are done, mm -hmm. and uh, and indeed here here you know uh, for any segment, right? Doesn't matter where you, where you want to start from. Um, okay, uh, I mean here maybe maybe here I would have to, to to argue a little bit because then between this and that, what I really need is to send. To send n, to send n to this one, not to not to not to not to this p, right? So I would have to really take this one and then and then uh, take the derivative of this one here, and that's my my second vector. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Sorry. Um. Um. Anyway, but but so so the first argument I gave was slightly wrong, but um, but it can be kind of easily corrected. Um. Okay. So we have found a bunch of shortest curves. Uh, right. Um, so next time, next time, uh, I'm going to see that that uh, between any two points, there's always at least one shortest curve joining them in the hyperbola. Right? Um, and then I'm going to uh, to show some uh, applications. Right. I'm going to show that the uh, that the exponential map from the tangent plane is. Um, to the to the to the hyperboloid is uh, surjective, um, and afterwards, then I'm going to start moving to the disk and the upper half plane. So on Monday we we still keep uh, talking about um, the hyperboloid. Okay, uh, thank you.